Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, graph a function, a polynomial function, uh, when it's in factored form. And the nice thing is about it's in factored form is it's very easy to find the zeros. Now again, remember the zeros are basically be going to be when f of x is equal to zero. So what we can do in each one of these cases to identify the zeros is replace f of x with zero. And what's nice about our polynomial already being in factored form, because sometimes higher order polynomials are not very easy to factor. So having it in factored form is nice because we know that when we have something, a product that's equal to zero, we can apply the zero product property to solve for your values. So therefore, I can set each and every one of these factors, set them equal to zero by, by the zero product property to identify the zeros. So therefore, x equals zero, x equals negative one, and x equals two. So to graph my polynomial, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify what my zeros are. So I have a zero at one, I have a zero at negative one, and I have a zero at positive two, okay? Now the next thing we need to do is identify the multiplicity. And the multiplicity is going to be the power of the factors. Basically, x is the same thing as x minus zero, raised to the first power, okay? So um, I'll just kind of put this as a minus zero raised to the first power. And you can see these other two factors are also raised to the first power. That tells us that the multiplicity is equal to one. Now that's really, really important for us to understand because when the multiplicity is equal to one, that tells us that the zero, that the, at the zeros, our graph crosses. Um, if it, the multiplicity is even, that means it's going to touch or just bounce, okay? Uh, that means it's gonna rebound, which I'll get to um, in this video. Now still, to identify what the graph looks like, it's still kind of a little bit difficult because we don't really know where, what the kind of the end behavior is. Now, to identify the end behavior, basically what we need to do is identify what the leading coefficient is as well as the, what the degree, the degree is. So if you just kind of think about this, if I was gonna multiply x plus one times x minus two, I would get x squared something. It's gonna give me a quadratic. And then if I multiply that by x, it's going to give me x cubed something. Now remember, whenever my degree is odd, that kind of looks like a line. The line is a, is a odd function as well. And if my leading coefficient is positive, then it's very similar to a line. y equals x has a positive power and a uh, positive coefficient. Therefore, my m behavior falls left and rises right. So now, all I need to do to graph this polynomial is connect my m behavior by going through my zeros. And my function is going to look something like that. I'm not, you know, obviously we want to use graphing technology to get a good idea, but I just want to kind of give you a rough kind of example. Um, in, the next, in the next one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set this equal to zero. So therefore, uh, we have negative x. Well, first of all, we set this equal to zero. So zero equals, actually, let's save a little space. And let's set it equal to zero. Now, um, when I have a negative, you see this negative factor, I can divide by negative one on both sides, and that gets rid of the negative, because the negative is really not going to affect um, the zeros or the solutions. It's gonna affect the end behavior, but it's not gonna affect where the graph crosses. So therefore, I set each of my factors equal to zero. And then I go ahead and solve. Now again, the first thing to do to solve for this, you can't add two, because you have to undo the squaring. So we're gonna take the square root on both sides. And therefore, oh, almost got that on my shirt. Therefore, that's going to give us x minus 2 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. So therefore, my zeros are x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. All right. So I'll go ahead and take this. Boom, boom. So I go to negative 2, 0, and then negative 3, 0. All right. Now, let's go ahead and multiply. Let's go and figure out our end behavior. Again, we need to identify what the degree is and the leading coefficient. So if I was gonna do x minus two squared, um, that's gonna multiply to give me an x squared, dot, 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 and there's a negative. Remember that negative's in front. And therefore, x plus three squared is gonna give me x squared, dot, dot, dot. So if I was gonna multiply x squared times x squared, that's gonna give me some function that's gonna be x to the fourth, and if then I multiply everything by a negative, it's gonna be a negative x to the fourth. Now, remember the end behavior of anything that's even is, has the same end behavior as a parabola. However, this one's negative, so again, we're going to flip that down. So then the end behavior is fall left, fall right. So my end behavior goes like this and goes like that. 
But again, to really understand, are we just crossing? Are we just going through these like we did in the last problem? No, because our multiplicity is different. Notice here, the power of the factors was 1. Since it was odd, that meant the graph crossed. Here, the power of each of my factors is 2. So we say the multiplicity is equal to 2, and that's very important because that tells us the zeros do not um, cross, but they actually bounce. And my graph would look something like that. And again, you can use graphing technology to kind of verify. Um, and this next example, this one can get very confusing for a lot of students because they, I switched around the variables. So make sure that you have this. You kind of rewrite this um, out. So we'll replace this with uh, x. So we'll have 0 equals x. I'm going to rewrite this as negative x plus 2 times x minus 1 squared. All right, that's very important because uh, when we're doing our end behavior, we know that, uh, well, first of all, let's use, the, let's use the zero product property here. So we get x equals zero. We'd have negative x plus two equals zero. And then we have x minus one squared equals zero. So by solving here, I got that one. Here I subtract two, divide by negative one, so x equals two. Here I take the square root of both sides and then add one, x equals one. So my zeros in this case are at zero, two, and at one. All right. Um, now, I also, let's go ahead and identify the multiplicity. Remember, when the power of the factor is 1, it's an odd multiplicity, means it crosses. When the power of the factor is 2 or any even power, that means it's going to cross or touch. So here, we can see that this has a power of 1, this has 2. And when you just have a variable x, it's kind of like x minus 0 to the first power, so that's going to have a multiplicity of 1. So that's multiplicity of 1. This is multiplicity of 1. This is a multiplicity of 2. Now, the next thing, last thing we need to do is identify the end behavior. And what's really, really important about me rewriting this is that you can see there's that negative, OK? Because x times negative x is going to leave me with a negative x squared. And then x minus 1 squared is also going to give, give me a x squared. So therefore, um, that's going to going to give me the same end behavior. Dang it. I should have left that 3, 4, 5. OK. Um, so therefore, that's going to give me a nen, another negative x to the fourth. I wanted to kind of change up my end behaviors. Um, but whatever. We'll, we'll deal with I should have changed that one. I changed this one. Silly me. Ah, well. So anyways, the end behavior is going to be fall left, fall right, the exact same one as this. The end behavior is exactly the same, negative x to the fourth. So therefore, it's going to fall left fall right, so the graph is going to look, oh, I'm sorry, but this one's different. The zeros are different, right? Um, this one, it crosses, so it crosses at zero. It crosses at, um, crosses at zero, bounces at one, and then crosses at two. So the graph looks like that. So it's different than this one. So it's very important for you to understand what this, what the zeros and the mul how the multiplicity changes. OK, last but not least, let's kind of get this multiplicity out of the way. If I did multiply these two, I would get an x squared times an x minus 2. x plus 3 squared would also give me an x squared. If I was going to do x squared times x times x squared, that's going to be x to the fifth, which is again is a positive, which is going to be the same end behavior as this one. So I guess I really should have just changed that one, but eh, well. All right, um, so anyways, my end behavior is going to be fall left, rise right. Again, I'm just using end behavior. I guess it's the same one. Let's go ahead and find the zeros. So let's replace with this zero. So I have that's equal to x, x plus 1, x minus 2, and x plus 3 squared. OK, notice here my one end behavior. I'm actually going to do this one a little bit quicker here. Um, I, I realize that by finding the zeros, it's basically x is equal to kind of like the opposite of these values. So I know I have um, x equals 0, which has a multiplicity of 1, and that has a multiplicity of 2. x equals negative 1 has a multiplicity of 1. x equals positive 2 has a multiplicity of 1. And x equals negative 3 has a, a multiplicity of 2. So that's going to tell me it's going to bounce. And again, this end behavior is fall left, rise right. So it bounces at the even multiplicity, which is negative 3, crosses, crosses, crosses. 
And again, that's just a rough representation. I did this one a little bit quicker. I didn't set them all equal to zero, but you could do that. Just make sure you know that when the zero has a even multiplicity, it's going to bounce, not cross. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a polynomial function in factored form. Thanks.